The next speaker I'm really excited to have up on stage because have you ever been there where you see a piece of content and you go, I wish I'd come up with that. And um, Paige and her glossary of SERP features is very much in that category. So she's going to be talking us through some of that, some of those changes, what's going on. If we can give her a very big round of applause. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Paige, and I'm here to talk you through... I'm not going to take you through the entire glossary, because there's a lot. Um, so I'm going to take you through a few of the really key insights around what we've found and some of the research that we've done. So I'll start off. What is a cert feature? A cert feature is anything that isn't your 10 blue links. It can be rich snippets, it can be featured snippets, it can be PAAs, people also ask, it can be anything. And these things change depending on what your query is. So how many are there? The reason I ended up writing a glossary is because I looked to our market leaders, like Moz, and they said there's 16. SEMrush said there were 16. Searchmetrics said there were 17. These guys also said there were 17, but there was a different 17. So that was really interesting. Frank Ranger had 24, so kudos to them. They're really good. They have a few more than this in a blog post, but some of them aren't UK specific or they don't actually exist in the SERPs anymore. Me and my team found 39. It's a lot of SERP features. And a lot of these push our organic listings way down. These have a massive impact on us. So this is the full list. Um, there's a bit.ly link at the top there. If you want the full glossary, that's where you can find it. But some of these have sub variations. So if you think of a knowledge panel, on desktop, that's on the right-hand side, easy. But on mobile, that then shifts to be at the top. So the tools that we're using, a lot of them couldn't figure out that that was still a knowledge panel, even though it had moved. And you can divide these into rich snippets, so these are the things that enrich your organic listing. So most of you should know what these are. These are star ratings, they're images, they're FAQs, and universal results. We call them blocks for short, because universal results is a mouthful. And this is essentially what they are. They're big, colorful, eye-catching blocks that steal our clicks. So I sent my glossary to Kelvin to speak today. And he really kindly shared it on Twitter, which is a fun place for a lot of young SEOs. Um, and basically what we found out was that all of the industry leaders also don't have the same terminology for a lot of these things. So some guys are calling something knowledge panels, some guys were calling them explore panels. But it was really actually quite a nice experience to be talking to people like Will Critchlow, Maudie Oberstein, Dr. Pete Myers. They were all really supportive. Um, the only bugbear that we had was answer box. So in my team, we call answer boxes featured snippets because we found that clients uh, were more able to understand what that was. But for future reference, they're technically an umbrella term for both featured snippets, which we can optimize for as SEOs, and knowledge cards, which we can't. These are based on the knowledge graph. And why should you care? I stole this from Izzy on Fire on Twitter this week because I think it encapsulates why we need to worry about this. Yes, you got organic position one. Great. But it's below four paid ads, a feature snippet, and a PAA. So how many clicks are you actually getting? And it gets worse. You will have all seen this graph by Ram Fishkin. 50% of organic clicks on zero click. All those searches are zero click. So of the 50% that are good, some of them are still no click, and there's no surprise. I don't have any dogs in my deck, but I preferred Ryan Reynolds, so I hope you enjoy that. I know the girls in the audience do. Um, so I can find out whether he's married very instantly. And you know, there's things for the guys. So the sports and weather and pronunciations, all really cool things, but you're gonna get zero clicks on these terms. This one I really like. This is an advanced knowledge card. Google actually has their own microsite linked to this knowledge card that has all the matches, all the players, news related to this. 
So I wonder how many clicks the actual Premier League site gets now. It's fair to say this isn't zero click either. So this is that good half of that pie chart. But it's just that Google got all the clicks. We got nothing. And th this isn't the only time this happens. There are different types of SERP features that are all this kind of microsite behind them. Google Flights, Google Hotels, Google Jobs. All of them link through to something. So why would the user come to us? We can still be visible here. It's not the end of the world. We just have to pay for it. Or, to be fair, jobs we don't have to pay for yet, technically. We'll see how 2020 goes. And we're making it worse for ourselves. Every time there's a new SERP feature, we jump on it. We're so excited to try out the next new thing. Because cast your mind back to featured snippets. When they first came on, SEOs were so skeptical. We thought that was going to be the end of clicks. Why would anyone come to our website? But actually, we ended up with 30 to 40% increased click-through rate. So great, SERP features are amazing. Until they're not. This tweet from Lily Ray shows exactly what happens when you put FAQ schema on a page that it isn't suitable for. And this is why keyword intent is more important than ever. Rory gave a really good example of how you can scrape keyword intent from the SERPs. I would thoroughly recommend you do this. Not only because it gives you that snapshot of what Google thinks, but you'll also be able to track this over time. If you think of the keyword Halloween costumes, 11 months of the year, that is a research term. In October, that is a transactional term. And if this is an industry you work in, you need to be tracking this, and you need to be tracking it over time and how these things change. We ran a test on FAQ schema. Transactional page did really well. We got loads more clicks, loads more traffic. We actually improved rankings, which technically isn't supposed to happen, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in their mouth. Um, the research page, on the other hand, did really badly. I mean, it's not rocket science. A lot of the queries going to this page were questions that could then be answered in the SERP. So clicks declined. I got really frustrated with all the tools that I was using. None of them were tracking FAQs. None of them were tracking half of the 39 that I just listed. So I met these great guys uh, called my Posio at Search Leads. And I said the, to them, this is my glossary. Um, how many do you think you could track? They said all of them. So I said, sure, OK, whatever. They emailed me back in a week saying that they'd done about 25. Um, and this is some of the research that we've managed to do together. So they're in the lobby. If you want to go talk to them, they're really great. 27% of page one is SERP features. That's more than PPC. PPC takes up 23% on average of that page one. SERP features take up 27. And we can break this down into the rich snippets and universal results again. But rich snippets are significantly smaller. And that's because this study is based on a count of their appearance. So rich snippets have 10 chances to appear on that query, whereas a universal result only has that one chance. It either appears or it doesn't. So this study isn't particularly good for representation. In this example, SERP features are just three, whereas organic and PPC are both five each. You can see that's not fair when you're looking at the actual size that these things are taking up. We are working with Myposio right now to attribute both pixel size, position, and weight to all of these things. But it's really hard. These things change size, shape, color, title constantly, depending on what device you're on, depending on what day of the week it is. So they, they're working really well on it, and it's coming along. So hopefully that'll be my next talk. But in the meantime, this is what we know. These are the pixels for this example set. And this is down to position five. This isn't all, of, this isn't all the way down to 10, mainly because I couldn't fit it on the slide. But I think that's a fair representation anyway. 47% of this example is taken up by SERP features. And that's a PAA that isn't interacted with, because anyone who's played with PAAs knows that they expand the more you play with them. Um, but yeah, 47% of that example, 
almost half of that page is SERP features. And that's just one SERP. We took over 10,000 keywords, duplicated them across device, because these things change a lot depending on what device you're on. And this is what we found. So it's no surprise that the rich snippets, everything with an RS dash, it's no surprise that there's a lot of them, because in this count study, they're, they're going to be more prevalent. They have more chances to appear. Despite that, PAAs are still the most common SERP feature in the SERPs right now. So how many out there have a PAA strategy? Of the 21,000 keywords, less than 20% didn't have a PAA. And not all SERPs are created equal. So I have to do a shout out to my sister agency, Rabbit and Pork. They're a voice search agency, um, because I stole their keywords. Um, so basically, I can divide these up into 23 different verticals. And it's really interesting to see how things vary. Something like alcohol has a lot of SERP features, a lot of organic listings, and very little PPC activity. We know that as SEOs, there's a lot of opportunity here. We can do a lot of things, whereas homeware, a lot of purple. You might just need to hand over a lot more power to the PPC guys and work a bit more with them. And that orange bar, the yellow there, that gets even crazier. The link on the footer there is to the white paper where you can spend a bit more time looking at this very, very insane graph. Um, my designer uh, cried when I said I needed 25 different colors. Um, but you can break these down into the universal results blocks. So you can see which, which verticals are most affected by these space-hugging things, and which ones are most affected by the rich snippets. So what's really interesting here is to see that insurance and hotels have jumped on FAQ schema. They're really going for a huge proportion of FAQs here, but the other verticals not so much. There could be an opportunity. These are my five favorites. So a, you can look at everything in the white paper, but these are my top five. The health vertical is a good SEO vertical. There's a lot of PA opportunities. There's a lot of featured snippets, even rich snippet images, all stuff that we can do as SEOs. There's a lot of opportunity here. Insurance, again, star ratings, FAQs, PAAs, really good opportunities for us. If you're an insurer without star ratings, all your competitors are doing it. You need to get on this. Hotels is a really good one because they have a vertical-specific ZERP feature. They are affected by a ZERP feature that is just for them. <laughs> and the same for restaurants somewhat because they're heavily affected by maps. So if you're not doing local SEO for your restaurant client, you're really missing out. And lastly, property. Property's up there because of that big red box. Knowledge panels and knowledge cards, if they're coming up in your keyword research, you need to be excluding them because they are big red flags of zero-click searches. So why should you care? I took that very, very intense graph and color-coded it. Your green is where we have as SEOs, this is quite rare, complete control. We put the code on the page and we decide whether these things exist for our listings. We then kind of decide what is visible within them. The orange, we don't really control whether that is present in the SERP, but we can damn well fight for it. We can go after those PAAs. We can go after those featured snippets. And red, pay for it or walk away. If Google has an owned SERP feature, you are not going to win that away from them. Equally, the hotels and flights features, you're just going to have to pay to be visible there. So just to round things off, I've just got a few tips on winning the, the winnable. So the jobs vertical, the recruitment vertical, isn't one that we've built out in the keyword research. Unfortunately, I couldn't steal that. Um, so it's one we want to follow up with. And this is kind of what we assume it's going to look like. We know that PAAs are relevant across all verticals, but we also know that Google Jobs is very, very common here. And this is what it looks like. So you get the portal in the SERP, and that will have one brand for that one job. When you go through into the actual microsite, there are a lot of other little brands referenced. And it's quite difficult to be that one brand that's in the SERP, but it should be fairly easy to get into the portal itself, into that microsite. You can steal my schema. Um, it's on the white paper, so you can go and steal that. 
Um, hopefully it works. Tweet me if it doesn't. And FAQs is very similar. FAQs is also schema markup. Um, you can test your code on the Google link there. Um, and if you've already got question and answer schema on your page, um, which you might have done for feature snippet optimization, you can just wrap this in FAQ page, which is really cool. But it does mean that everything you've wrapped will then appear in the SERP. It doesn't cherry pick like feature snippets do. And be really careful what you're putting on there. It is not suitable for everything. The really important thing to note about FAQs is that you might identify a query that isn't suitable and say, we're not gonna do FAQs here. If a competitor does it anyway, that's the clicks gone for all of you. So then you have to react to that and do something different. So it's not just a you and no one else. You affect the entire SERP rate on that. There's a, a lot online about optimizing for feature snippets and PAAs, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but generally you can optimize for PAAs the same way you would do feature snippets. It's just about tracking them. Tracking them can be very difficult, so you need a tool like Rank Ranger or MyPosio that will do this for you. This really good article is about how volatile they can be and how that can actually be an opportunity for you. And that they can help you leapfrog your competition. In this example, car insurance has a massive PAA right at the top of the SERP. If you open that first box, oh, oopsie, that one. If you open that first box, um, you will have uh, Nerd Wallet has that first PAA. You don't technically need question and answer schema to get feature snippets at PAAs, but it does seem to help. If you use the Google testing tool, you don't really need to worry about warnings, but you do need to worry about errors. Look towards the formats that Google is preferring. If it's a paragraph, a list, or a table, Try and replicate that or improve upon it. If it's a paragraph now, but you think a list would be better, give it a go, it might help. Just try and be the better, fresher, sexier answer, essentially. Just a note on looking forward. This was launched at Google I.O. not that long ago, and it seems super cool. So basically, it's a SERP feature where you can serve your products in the SERP only on branded terms. That's super cool, right? But does it actually help you? If you're serving your products in the SERP on a branded query, were they not just gonna click on your website anyway? Can you serve your products in a better way in that SERP than you would have on your website? Can you track how they interact with you? I don't think so. So just to finish off, my key takeaways, the search landscape is constantly changing. Do not waste your effort on zero-click searches. Know your vertical and its specific needs. Think of hotels, think of flights, think of jobs. And test the effects of, that, of those SERP features before you just blank it out, out to everybody. You can find the links uh, to the glossary, the slides, and the white paper there. And thank you for your time. <laughs>